Hello and welcome to The Coach's Box, presented by Monster Hydro. I'm your host, Rich Lamborn, and this is a new series where we give you, the beach volleyball fan, a look at the game from the coach's perspective. Every week, we'll be answering some questions and giving you our point of view on the game that you love. If you have anything you'd like to know, please submit those questions in the comments section below. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining me in our inaugural edition of The Coach's Box. My name is Rich Lamborn. I'll be your host, and I'm coming to you from none other than the AVP warehouse. With social distancing and so forth being what it is, we don't get to sit in an actual coach's box, unfortunately, but we have a little bit of a makeshift one here. We even got sand that we can have beneath our toes. We got some Monster Hydro in the fridge just in case I get parched. What we'd like to do today is take a look at some of the questions that have come in for us and discuss some concepts about the game of beach volleyball or, or whatever our submissions are uh, from a coach's perspective. And it really helps, I feel like, if you hear it said from a boxed in perspective. Okay, so that's what we're gonna go with today. Let's go ahead and have a look at question number one here. Hi, Rich. I'm Hope Dickinson from Boston. Boston! Of course, sending in video submissions, we'd like it to be an interactive thing. And uh, as such, I'm going to have just a few friendly comments. Boston, you know, it always makes me think of my favorite comedian, Bill Burr. Uh, it makes me wonder, like he always says when he announces he's from Boston, does that mean hope that you know about uh, math <laughs> and you love apples and maybe you're from Southie? We'll find out. I've been an AVP fan for several years and have gone to a number of events, including New York City, Chicago, a couple in Florida, Atlantic City, and Manhattan Beach. Okay. Thank you, Hope, first of all, for attending that many of our tournaments nationwide. It, it uh, appears you're willing to travel to support uh, the tour, and we certainly appreciate you for that. Let's get to your question. And here's my question. Outside of athleticism and skills, in your opinion, what makes a good beach volleyball partnership? Okay, outside of athleticism and skills, what makes a good beach volleyball partnership? Okay, I'm, I'm glad you took my uh, top two <laughs> right off the top. See if I can come up with a third thing that creates a good partnership. Obviously, we hear the word chemistry used a lot, and that's uh, a very abstract concept, but important nonetheless. And uh, I, I think professionalism is another one that I would, uh, I would say there, hope, training hard, taking care of your body, uh, eating well, uh, strength training, recovery, sleeping, all those kind of things that we would sort of list as professional attributes, I think are very important. Let's see, let's see what we got. Thank you, Hope, for your submission and thank you for attending uh, all the tournaments that you've attended. Let's get to question number two. What's up, Rich? What's up, bro? My name's Chaz, I'm from Huntington Beach. Chaz, love it, you got the LA fully representing and also, that's the best enunciation of Huntington Beach I've ever heard. Hit all those consonants for me, baby. Just starting to get into beach volleyball a little bit. Um, gone to the Huntington tournament for the past couple years. And I have a couple questions for you. All right. We'll limit um, you to one. It's okay. Good morning. Oh. Good morning. Chaz, virtual fist bump. Way to cover up when you saw somebody walking by you outdoors. Way to be responsible, kid. Sorry. Um, actually, just one question. Okay, good. Good, good. What do I do when I'm serve receiving? Right now, when I get a good serve, a lucky fan in the crowd gets a souvenir. So what do I do to keep the ball straight? Thanks, Rich. All right. Chaz, this might be my favorite question ever just because of the way you posed it. 
Uh, we call it when I'm in serve reception or serve receiving, however you like to say it. Uh, I was discussing with my producer earlier, <laughs> we were wondering if you could send us in a, a follow-up video on what's the largest crowd you were ever playing in front of so we know how many people are hoping to get that souvenir off your platform. <laughs> but in all seriousness, let's get into a, an actual answer for you there because it is an important question. Uh, I actually have a few video clips of some of the concepts I like to think about in serve reception and some of the things I talk to my athletes about. And that is, we're gonna look at a little bit of preparation and a little bit of uh, arm work from a couple different guys here. I got a couple clips of Nick Lucena and then one of John Hyden as well. So let me just walk you through this first clip and kind of talk about some of the things we're seeing. It looks like only three people are out there, but Nick will soon surface. Down, so and we'll talk about... To see if anybody adjusts to that here. Boom, there he is. No. <laughs> okay. What's happening there is Nick has kind of an unusual setup. He starts almost all the way with his heels on the end line and sort of walks into the serve receive position as, uh, as the server's getting ready to go. And what that does for him, in my opinion, in my belief, is that it gives him this forward leaning feel, this posture where he's kind of covering the ball uh, with his shoulders and arms and really in a, in a nice balanced position and capable of making a good pass. Let's take, we'll take one more look at another example of that. We get a, a little bit of an end line view of it here. We can really see how deep he is, especially in comparison to Phil here. He always likes to start at the back line. Camera will even give us the play-by-play -play on his starting position. A couple steps in, and of course, they serve Phil. But you can see Nick's preparation there. So if you have trouble as a serve receiver backing away from a ball that gets served at you, maybe that's something to think about in your preparation, uh, stepping into the ball, okay? The distinction we have to make is that you're stopped at the moment of contact, at the moment the server is contacting the ball. We don't want to be charging because then we're going to have to back up. Second concept we're going to talk about is cutting off the angle, meaning not, let, not letting the ball get behind us. Okay, I should kind of have this invisible line between my feet wherever and whenever I'm set up, and I don't want to start playing the ball behind that line because otherwise I'm going that way when I want the ball to go that way. Okay, I, I want all things to be moving in the same direction and let's take a look at Johnny Hyden receiving a, a very, very difficult serve, but doing a great job cutting off an angle. We even get it in slow motion. You can see he's fully extended, but he's getting that out front of his shoulders. I'm, I'm going to rewind that one more time. Let's, he kind of takes that step into a little tennis hop, makes a great move to his right side to cut that angle off. And what that does is... Even on a tough serve, it keeps the ball going in front of him, which is obviously where we want the play to develop. He loses very few balls off of his arms and into the crowd, like you said there, my man Chaz. So good preparation, step into the ball a little bit so you don't feel like you're backing up and make sure we cut off angles. We play the ball out front of our feet, okay? The ball knows angles is my number one mantra in, in serve reception. And that, all that means is if I make a good angle, I'm gonna end up with a good pass. So all that footwork and stuff we're talking about is designed for me to make a good angle over and over and over again, over a long period of time. Hopefully that helps, Chaz. Thank you again for your submission. Thank you for being responsible and covering up your face when talking to strangers out in public. Hi everyone, my name Question is Kelly this is Mona. Kelly we are and from Mona. Redondo Beach, California. And every weekend we're usually on the beach playing volleyball. And every year we cannot wait for the amazing athletes to come to Manhattan Beach and Hermosa Beach. We have a question for Rich. Mona and I are wondering, what made you transition to beach volleyball after your indoor career? Bye. Okay, Kelly and Mona, thank you for the submission. I'm gonna direct this answer to Mona, obviously, because I'm a dog fanatic and I live in an apartment building where dogs aren't allowed so I have to live vicariously through uh, Kelly here I suppose um, and so I appreciate you including Mona in this Kelly. My, my transition was uh, fairly swift 
from indoor to beach, and it was just kind of a, a bit of fortuitous timing, to be honest. Uh, I played indoor for a long time. Uh, my, my career kind of abruptly came to a close, and my good friend and kind of my coaching, one of my coaching mentors, Tyler Hildebrand, uh, was working with Jake Gibb and Casey Patterson at the time, and also M. Day and Summer Ross. Uh, and since he was working with both of those teams, he had kind of a situation where he could have an assistant, as it were, an intern, probably is a better, better uh, word for what I was doing for them. Uh, and so I got to learn from him. It was just kind of a smooth and, uh, like I said, lucky from a timing uh, perspective, uh, an opportunity for me. And then, you know, being on the beach is awesome. Obviously, the lifestyle is great. The environment is great. Uh, the people in the sport are awesome. And so that's how it happened for me, and I've, I've been going that way ever since. Thank you, Kelly and Mona. Hope that helps. All right, let's see question number four here. Thank you guys for these submissions. Hi, Rich. This is Alex from L.A., and I have a question for you. What's the hardest skill to teach on the beach? Probably the most difficult thing about the game of beach volleyball is reading the game, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Because that's kind of an abstract concept. The ability to take in information and process that information. Now, probably a lot of that equation is going to be experience-based, okay? You need to have kind of a, a, a large library of experience. Uh, and just like anything, even regular reading, right? We need to practice it, we need to practice it. We get more and more proficient the more we practice it. Let's just focus on the defender's uh, reads. I need to be looking at who we serve, okay? How do they pass the ball? This is kind of my progression of things that I should be trying to take in information about and process. Did they pass it well? Okay, good. What does their approach look like? Do they go, if they're a left sider, do they go out wide and kind of take this angular approach? Do they go inside to outside? Do they maybe go around to the right side? And what does that mean, right? Next, I have to look at the set. Do they get a, a, a tight set? And what do I know about that player when they get a tight set? Do they have some range? Do they just go generic knuckle pokey over the top? Those are the kind of things I need to, to cue in on next. If they get a good set, what does their shoulder angle look like? Then what does their wrist look like? I mean, these, these are things that are happening in the blink of an eye, but they're things that if I'm a good defender and I can read the game well, I'm processing in, in an instant, okay? So that's, that's kind of what I mean by reading the game, and you can see why that's such a difficult uh, thing to teach because you really have to go out there and do it a lot, but you, you also can have that sort of progression of cues that I was talking about there from pass to set to approach angle to then, you know, kind of shoulder and wrist contact, okay? And then we sort of layer in a little bit of tendencies that I know about that player uh, underneath as well. And I'll pull up, since we talked about defenders, I'll pull up a couple clips here uh, of some great defenders making some great reads. And what I want us to focus on is what is their eyes doing throughout that whole play? They're, more than likely, they're not bobbing up and down. They're trying to stay steady and take in as much of that information as they can to give themselves the best chance to make the right read. Heads up. <laughs> what a dig by Taylor Kraft. Not much to say, Dave. Let's just appreciate it. Taylor Kraft is fearless. All right, that pretty much wraps up episode one of The Coach's Box presented by Monster Hydro. Uh, thank you so much to Hope, Kelly, Chaz, and Alex for sending in those questions. Uh, it's, it's meant to be a fun and kind of interactive thing, you know? We want, we want a little bit of banter back and forth, but mostly we want to uh, give some insightful kind of perspective into the game. Uh, and we want to hear what you think, what you're curious about, any of that stuff, and hopefully, we won't have to always do it from a warehouse. We can get outdoors and kind of get back to that beach volleyball environment that we love. My producer reminded me, and it's very pertinent, I think, that if you stay ready, you don't have to get ready. But for the time being, stay home, stay safe, and we will see you soon.
Yeah, I, I already know what I don't like about it. We'll do it live. That's a little misleading, right? Have a little bit of fun getting to know one each other. Do you ever wander into a sentence and you just have no idea where the exit is? <laughs> Why are my producers laughing at me? Yeah, I'm... I feel like I've permanently derailed. <laughs> Start over.